Vegas, baby! Paso Robles! Here we come. Paso Robles, baby! <laughs> On this episode of Limited Release Beer, the guys traveled to the Firestone Walker Invitational, where some of the best brewers in the world came together for one hell of a gathering in California's Central Coast. Limited Release. So Rob, what's on tap for today? And where the hell are we? And why are you dressed like Jesse James? <laughs> we are in the middle of nowhere, California, in central farm country. Um, we're going to be driving just south of nowhere to Paso Robles, where the Firestone Walker Invitational Beer Festival will be held this year. Ah, beer festival, kind of going outside our comfort zone a little bit. Yeah, well, it's just sort of another way for us to showcase stuff that's going on with our fans and go, what's going on in the country and what they can hang out and do. Yeah, and probably drink like a hundred different types of beer too, I'm guessing. Well, there's got to be some reward for all the hard work we do, and I'll be a little interested to see how we're holding up after tasting so many beers. Not second. driving. Called it. Oh, God damn it. The city of El Paso de Robles was founded in 1857 as a rest stop for travelers heading through California on the El Camino Real. It has a long winemaking history with the first wine grapes introduced by Spanish conquistadors in 1797. Over the last hundred years, the number of wineries has proliferated to over 250 today. But it's not the world-class wines we're here for. Nestled among all the vineyards is a brewery that has become synonymous with high-quality brewing, Firestone Walker. Yeah, so we're not going to get into the history on this episode of Firestone Walker. We're going to save that for another episode when we come back. What we will tell you today is that Firestone Walker has won several hundred awards for their beers, and they've been named the best mid-sized brewery twice at the Great American Beer Festival. They do have a strong history in winemaking, having owned a vineyard in the region since 1972, and they support the local community. In fact, 100% of the proceeds from today's event uh, go towards supporting the Paso Robles Pioneer Day Festival. Cool. How can you maybe take my duster off? Because it's 100 degrees out. Oh, God. Only in its second year, the Invitational has already become one of the country's marquee beer festivals. Tickets this year sold out in one day, and the lineup of guest brewers is dominated by some of the best craft brewers out there. Uh, so the inaugural festival last year drew great praise from the attendees, with a lot of people saying it was the best event that they'd attended. Yeah, and if you look at the sort of who's who's list of the elite brewers that are coming to this event, it's really, we're getting the cream of the hops. That's horrible. <laughs> No, I think there is, though, an expectation that when you're invited to attend, that you're supposed to bring something really unique. So I guess we're going to spend all day hunting whales. <laughs> yeah, I, I there, Ahab. This is uh, one of the best beer festivals we feel like in, uh, in the United States. And it's just an opportunity to, for us to showcase our beers with some of the best breweries in the country. Probably the brandy barrel aged uh, 2013 Hunapu. We're planning on it, um, maybe tomorrow, 
I'd like to bring some wine back for the wife so I don't uh, <laughs> have to uh, catch harsh words. At one o'clock, the doors open and the crowd streamed in. Yeah, um, Mark and Thorsten, and we are from Braufaktum. We are, as you can say, the pioneer of the German craft beer revolution. So we started three years ago brewing our own craft beer and importing uh, two or three beers from Fires and Walker. Yeah, and when you look around, of course, here are the most famous, the best breweries from the United States and uh, from other countries. So to have all these so close together, it's very great. And we enjoy tasting the best beers uh, from all over the world. We brought a, a Kölsch style beer, a dry hop, as we did it uh, in former times in Germany. 100% uh, the fire hop. And uh, the smoked wheat beer, we have won silver medal uh, last year in San Diego at the World Beer Cup. Uh, it's a uh, second time for the brewery to take part last year and this is the second year, but this is my first time attending myself. Well, the number one appeal would be, you know, we were invited by a uh, top-notch, you know, premier craft brewery like Firestone Walker here in the U.S. And how can you say no to that? <laughs> Uh, the U.S. market is much bigger, first of all, and it's much more advanced. Uh, Japan is still on its way. We're still well behind where the U.S. is right now. <laughs> I'd like to taste all of them and as much as possible. <laughs> It's always been good friends with Firestone Walker. Um, when they when they put out a beer festival that we had to come to, we obviously yeah. made time for it. What are you guys pouring today? So we're pouring a court, pouring court of all. It's, uh, it's our gold medal winning Brett Saison. Nice. We're also pouring a, another award winning beer, our Frambois Amorosa, uh, which is our raspberry, our sour raspberry beer. So, nice. uh, you know, they wanted a rare beer. Uh, Frambois this year, I think, is the best Frambois we've ever made. So yeah. that was an easy choice. And then, you know, it's going to be a hot day, um, a nice light bread saison. It's probably going to refresh people here later in the day. So it wasn't a hard sell. I am, I have, am an acquaintance of Matt Brindelson. We've known each other for a long time. We used to both brew in the Chicago area for different breweries. And uh, really, it's the Fire, Firestone Walker Invitational Brewfest. And that means that we're invited. We got invited. We were asked, um, you know, there's thousands of breweries in the United States right at the moment, and there's only 45 of us here. I kind of think that this beer fest is the best of the best. We are very honored, privileged, and uh, humbled by being asked to come and participate in this event. It's great. I know that uh, we're in, you know, it's a beer festival in wine country, and I actually, you know, though I am now brewing in Truckee, I learned how to brew in Sonoma County and it's a different type of wine but it's I love the fact that we're down in the in the area more or less where Sideways was filmed it's a you know it's a great movie and uh, 
you know, if one comes to Paso Robles or San Luis Obispo, Buellton, what have you, that it's all part of a bigger, you know, wine experience. So, you know, we're drinking beer, and as they say, it takes a lot of good beer to make great wine, but I think it takes more good wine to make great beer. So it's the afternoon here at Firestone Walker. Uh, I gotta say, I don't think I've ever been to an event with sort of better breweries or more brewers actually attending the event. And just the quality of beers is absolutely amazing. Now it's very interesting. People are actually standing in line almost 30, 45 minutes for some beers. Where right next door, there's gonna be no lines that uh, people are able to just walk up and get some of these high quality beers. And I'm being photobombed, aren't I? <laughs> now I, I will say, if, if you're gonna come and you, you wanna get here right when it opens because it's, you know, it's four o'clock People started running out of beers, which I believe is the idea for the, the brew tents. They sort of want to run out before the end of the day so there's no rush on them right at the end. I think if we we didn't come here, uh, Matt at Firestone would be pissed. <laughs> and we'd never let down a friend and he'd do the same for us. This one's different because it's comfortable. Uh, you don't ticket food. The lines, though long, they, they're, they're moving. Yeah. It, it has the same kind of look and feel and camaraderie as, uh, as Boonville, yeah. but it's not held at a time and place where you will get rained on off and on every couple years, yeah. which is nice, yeah. although this happens to be the hottest day of the year for this area, <laughs> and then after uh, today, it's going to cool off, and it looks like they, they, they're prepared. This is just a very well-prepared yeah. thing. There's guys cruising around uh, looking to take care of you. Uh, they come in, they ask you if there's anything you need. They're on top of ice, moving your beer around, keeping it cold. Um, I'd say the key word for this uh, festival is comfort. Nice. I'll just say that this is where they're all being civil and before 5 o'clock when they will all become ravenous wolves, foaming at the mouth, zombies, beer zombies. It happens at every festival. It's called the rule of the shutoff. This is a Barnaby from Three Flight. Fantastic. This is Mikkel from Mikeller. And uh, this is the Hogger from uh, from Shirley. <laughs> Correct. Yes. The Hogger, that's a new one. I haven't heard that one. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good one, huh? <laughs> yeah, he's real super original. It is. <laughs> it's my last name with an er on it. <laughs> and of a, and an article. Right, true. If Matt Brandelson asks you to come, you come. Yeah, you don't because <clears throat> he's you don't a, say no to Matt. Yeah, we he's a he's a good friend of ours and he's also, you know, so well respected in the in the, the brewing community. So yeah, we yeah. do it and, and you know, and that's all these breweries are you know, he hand selects all of them and it's just great to be a part of the industry. I mean we're never gonna sell our beer in Paso Robles, but it's uh oh. it's an awesome opportunity to come here and uh, drink beer and have uh, exposed some people that have traveled for miles and miles to uh, what we do and what we love. Yeah. Exactly. For me, absolutely, yeah. There's tons of breweries I'm not familiar with. Beechwood, uh, for example. Um, so I haven't even made it around yet. But yeah, we don't get get to try a lot of the rare stuff for Minnesota. I don't actively trade for beer. Um, so uh, I rely on festivals and, and traveling to try them. So. Also, the you know one of the one of the requirements for being here is that the brewers have to be present to pour their beer. Yeah. So it's not just a bunch of volunteers. Nothing against volunteers. We love them. They help them out in a great many festivals. But you actually get to speak to the people, and you can. And as as brewers, we uh, we're very into learning more and more about our craft. And it's nice to actually speak to other brewers. And there are a million ways to make beer. I mean, yeah. four ingredients and a million different flavors. Yep. Um, it's it's all about invest and uh, power violence. Yeah. West Coast power violence. Yep. <laughs> an, often, an, often overlooked, an often overlooked genre from uh, from the West Coast. Oh, yeah. the, the, the brewing community is tiny. Yeah. And we all know each other and we all help each other out. It's it's a huge resource for us technically. Uh, you know, if I, if, I, if I have a problem, I, and I know Todd has had experience with it, I can call him. You know, and or we, we talk about recipes, whatever. It's uh, none of us are like the big three 
beer companies fighting over 0.1 percent of the market share. Right. You know, the rising tide floats all ships. So. Yeah, all. Uh, uh, share for you to steal, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Oh, and we are. So it's the end of the day, it's like Disneyland's closing, everybody's leaving, everybody's now sad because the beer pouring is done. Magic Kingdom is closed, Magic Kingdom, no more fast track passes. But uh, you know, it, it was just an awesome, it was an awesome day. It was just incredible beers. I don't have to. She did fast track for Dark Lord. Oh my God. Fast, fast track, track for, that's Dark Lord. our advice on this episode. Fast track for Dark Lord. Fast track for Dark Lord. Um, but no, it's, uh, other than it being 100 degrees, which kind of sapped a lot of strength out of everybody. I didn't really see anybody fall down and like pass out from heat stroke, but I'm sure it happened at some point. Probably, probably. But I mean, you know, as far as events we've been to, and even like the things we haven't filmed, the other, other beer fests I've been to, I've never been anywhere that had such an incredible lineup. Right, well, give me a, give me a beer. Most incredible yeah, breweries there are in the country. And we had uh, some of the food options, with, which were really good. I, amazing amount of pulled stuff. <laughs> pulled pork, pulled other things, pulled chicken, pulled things, which, you know, when it's 100 degrees, I'm not really too excited about having a lot of, you know, hot, spicy foods, but yeah, whatever. I got it for some ceviche. <laughs> a little yeah, ceviche, some nice chilled soups, <laughs> a little crudo would have been lovely. Yeah. But uh, no. I, I had the avocado ice cream, though. That was good. That was a little odd. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie. That was a little strange. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the, the crowd seemed to have a great time, but yes. it was like, you know, it took a little time to... Uh, yeah, kind of, you know, have people come in, they, they just storm the lines, it got real busy, but, yeah. you know, it, it thinned out at the yeah, end. But the guys at Firestone Walker, they did an awesome job here. This was a beautifully job. put together event. Um, everything was super easy, everything was convenient, everything was nicely laid out, and, and actually, one thing we heard from a lot of the brewers was, it's one of their favorite events because the Firestone Walker makes everything for them super easy. People are constantly coming by, moving their beer for them, and hauling ice for them, and everything, and all they have to do is kind of show up and pull the pie and pull it out. All right, so it's the day after the event. Um, we're here in downtown Paso Robles. It's quite lovely out right now. It's not 100 degrees, which is awesome. Um, <laughs> But uh, so, what do you think of the event? What was your favorite thing? Uh, you know, my favorite things were number one. It was a super well organized event. There was, you know, when the gates opened, everybody just flooded right in. There was no reason for people to wait outside for 12 hours before they came in. And when the gates opened, people just dumped into the place and it just filled up in like two seconds. It was amazing. Um, two, you know, not that it was the fact that everything was already paid for. It was nice. So whether I wanted food or beer or whatever. I didn't have to worry about money all day. I just walked up and grabbed what I wanted. And everything there was really, really good. The beer, the food, everything. Um, it made it just very convenient and, and simple. It, was, it all ran very, very smoothly. Yeah, I, I love the fact that, uh, you know, just everywhere you looked, there was a brewer that, that you knew. Yeah. I mean, there was, a, there was a, a brewery that you'd heard of that you would actively seek out their beers for uh, because they really just did pick the cream of the crop from across the country to come and attend. And, you know, it's just amazing that whenever we talk to the brewers and we ask them, you know, why did you come? And they said, because we were asked to come. And when Matt asks, you come. Yeah. So uh, we were, uh, you know, it was just surrounded by just, just great beers. Uh, we had a nice framboise from uh, Lost Abbey, which yeah, fit the day perfectly. Oh, perfect, yeah. Uh, Schadenfreude from uh, Sirly. Schadenfreude. Schadenfreude. We had a couple of glasses of that because it just fit the day right. Yeah, it was perfect for the day, as a matter of fact. You know, I've never been to an event where you had this kind of exposure to the people who are really making the beer and they're happy to talk to you and, you know, you don't want to hold up the line, but they'll chit-chat and they'll tell you all about it and, and they're super approachable and that was really, really cool. Places where we, before, I, I before, you know, you may see the brewer in the distance as you walk past, but um, here they're right up front and they're saying, hey, how are you? It was great. Uh, festival is actually held in a you know a facility that's designed to handle festivals as opposed to a parking lot <laughs> as opposed to a parking lot so that was that was awfully convenient um, you know the, the facilities worked out great they had a nice yeah. stage with a couple bands on it yeah no, it's worth the trip man that was a, that was a fun day until well, next time keep on drinking Get to the event when it opens, as some of the more limited beers run out early. It is hot. Bring sunscreen and drink water during the day. 
pick three key beers that you absolutely have to wait in line to try. But don't forget that every brewer there has great beers pouring. Enjoy the party, watch the band, talk with brewers, and enjoy the warm California sunshine.